My name is Randy Tronic, and the favorite thing about, about Bishop Arts is it's organic. I mean, everyone who's here comes from here, and it's just a great neighborhood place. Okay, now it's time for my favorite meal of the day. That's dinner. This is when I like to go all out. So I decided to stop by a local favorite right at the corner of Davis and Llewellyn in Cena. Let's go check it out. Encina kind of personifies Bishop Arts. It's elevated, but immediately approachable. The open kitchen here allows diners to see their dishes coming together in real time, and the bar is always full of locals sorting out the world's problems over a glass of wine or a craft cocktail made to order. This place is owned by Chef Matt Balgi and his life and business partner, Corey McCombs, who runs Front of House. From chorizo mussels to the most decadent Berkshire pork shop in the city, diners leave here full and fulfilled. But there's another key ingredient to their success, Encina's commitment to using local farmers and ranchers as much as possible. It is not an easy way for restaurants, but it is the delicious way. So I sat down with two of those farmers, John and Eliza Kilburn of Comeback Creek Farms, to talk about the importance of sourcing local and to have a true Texas tasting at Encina. How are y'all? Um, we're doing so good right now. Uh, Chef, can you tell me what beautiful things you just brought out? Yeah, so we'll start here. So this is a bar in uh, Wagyu beef cheek pastrami uh, out of Sherman, Texas. And we make the pimento cheese that's underneath uh, out of a Granberry Gold from Lipan, Texas. Uh, and then we did some dill pickled Jimmy Nardello peppers from Comeback Creek on top. Comeback Creek uh, Red Russian Kale, Windy Meadows Farms out of Waco, that is their chicken thighs, and then Comeback Creek Escabeche peppers on the side. 44 Farms Strip out of Cameron, Texas. Ooh. Then we have Comeback Creek Swiss Shard on the bottom, so Texas on a table. Texas on a table. Chef, I've just got to ask you really quickly, what does it mean to be able to source from Texas? What does that bring to what you're able to put on the table? You know, it's building a relationship that, you know, you cultivate over years. A little background on Comeback Creek Farms. Located about two hours east of Dallas, this is truly a mom and pop operation. Together, John and Eliza Kilburn supply fresh produce of all kinds to some of Dallas's finest restaurants. And tonight, they get to enjoy the fruits of their own labor. How does it feel to see what you've worked so hard on on a plate like this and then to see people all around enjoying it. It's just a beautiful full circle moment where it's just, I mean, it's fabulous. And then to have the relationships, of course, is the icing on the cake. Speaking of relationships, the story behind this husband and wife has deep roots. Eliza met John when he first started farming. She was shopping for local produce and saw a young, handsome farmer and his blackberries, which caught her eye. I remember an email from her like maybe Sunday or Monday after that Saturday market asking if uh, if I would have those berries next week. And I already made up my mind, I'm not picking those things again. So, you know, it's, they're, they're on the ground, it's low, there's copperheads everywhere, you're getting prickles in your hand, so I said, it's just not worth it. But I got the email and I said, okay, I'll, I'll pick one more week. Oh, yeah, so. I, think, I think I sent you blushing just a little bit. <laughs> Apparently those blackberries were so good, this Dallas City girl moved out to the farm. Their love has produced countless harvests, five beautiful children, and the amazing food on our table this evening. John's story of farming is just as unexpected. In his late 20s, he was diagnosed with cancer. He was doing a completely different career, but that diagnosis changed everything. I said, if I survive this, I'm gonna do something different, something I've always wanted to do. So when I came back to Texas uh, after uh, that, um, I just, quit my job and moved out there and started growing tomatoes. Are you grateful in any way for that experience, that cancer diagnosis, because of what it taught you about life? Yes, for sure. I think when I first started this, I said, this is something I don't have to ever retire from. You know, do you still keep... feel that way? I do, yes. Oh my gosh. And looking at the plates headed out to happy customers at Encina, thank goodness there's no retirement in sight. And make no mistake, farming is not easy, and neither is sourcing local for restaurants like Encina. But both say it is worth it when you take that first bite. There's nothing like A, having the relationship, but also cooking with what's truly locally grown. I mean, it has better flavor, it's much fresher, it, but again, it doesn't come easy. Do you think there's a universal lesson in that, that something that's not easy, that takes time, that can humble you, that ultimately 
the flavor, the taste, the experience is so much better. Do you yes. think there's some kind of lesson in there? Absolutely. The rewards are greater. I mean, anything that comes too easy should be looked upon without. And speaking of hard work and being worth it, John says the same rules apply to life. Do you have any advice for anybody at home? Maybe they don't have a diagnosis, but maybe they have not designed the life that they want particularly. Do you have any advice for those individuals? Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's never too late. I don't remember if it was Gandhi, maybe I used to have this quote that I would always think of, and it was, um, every night when I lay down I die, when I wake up the next day I'm reborn. So just, uh, it's, it's never too late to, to do what you want to do or to do something different. If that's not a toast, I don't know what is. Thank you all for this delicious food. That's on the well, plate. thank you. Cheers. Cheers. After dinner, the night is still young. Let's check out some live music on the main drag of Bishop Arts at Revelers Hall. Come on. Revelers Hall pays tribute to this area's French roots. The New Orleans-style live music venue is the kind of place where you can cast aside your cares and hit the dance floor. Every night, a different group takes the stage, and on this night, we're blessed with the songs and styles of Dana Harper and her band. A woman who dominated the voice, getting three judges to turn their chairs. Dana commands an audience like a general commands an army. If they love it, if they hate it, I just want them to feel something. I think a lot of times in this world, in the climate that we're in right now, a lot of times people just kind of numb themselves and, and want to like disappear. And I just want people to walk in and feel anything. But love, I want people to feel love. At Revelers Hall, people of all different backgrounds gather, and music does what it does best. It allows us to forget our differences and come together with the music, dancing, drinking, conversing with old friends and new ones made. In many ways, what you see here is America at its best, what we wish it could be every day. Okay, we have had the most amazing day in Bishop Arts from breakfast to lunch to dinner to shopping to after dinner drinks. But I've got to say my favorite thing has been the people that we've met, their passion and the lives that they've created. If you've got a neighborhood you want us to visit, please let me know. We might just show up with our cameras. But for now, I'm going to end our day with a few moments of bites of bliss.